Hey, and welcome you guys to a very special episode of The Boys of Outspoken. We have a special guest with us here today, Nathan Hale Williams, actor, clap it up, clap it up, <laughs> actor, director, and author. Thank you so much for coming uh, with us for this interview. It is my pleasure. Yeah. First I'm so excited to be here. We play kickball together, and uh, his team is in the finals. Yeah, we, we were the number one seed going into the but, <laughs> your, first, uh, your first game, uh, who won? Your first game. I don't remember. Barack Ballers. Were y'all that early <laughs> on? That was the only game they won. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us your story. Like, where did you start off? Where, where did baby Nathan start? Well, I'm originally from Chicago and uh, grew up. Cubs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really a White Sox fan, but I'm pro Cubs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I left at 17 to go to school, but not that far. I went to the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. And then after that, I went to the East Coast uh, to go to law school at GW, George Washington in nice. D.C. Yeah, my mom is Marsha. My daddy is Pastor Williams. He's a oh. ba- Yeah, until... But- how Baptist though? Like, is it backwards Baptist? Or? Like, when I was 16, he told me if I was gay, he was gonna shoot me. Back. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I was, yes. I was but, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, 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 pretty rough. Yeah, no, 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 because my parents. Think my mother got a divorce from my father right. when I was ten because she knew he was crazy. Okay. And gotcha. um, and my mother is the salt of the earth. I, yeah. We call her Mama J. Uh-huh. And before you know these reality shows came up with these Mama D's yeah. and all that, mm-hmm. my mother is Mama J. She's the original. Yeah, she is the <laughs> original. And she's the diva <laughs> over the day. Does your mom like? Does she really like support you saying you know go out and live your life and do your stuff? And without my mother, I would not have been able to go follow my dreams and do all of that. When I decided to leave my high paying job at my law firm, my corporate law firm, when I was about 27, 28, to go into entertainment. My mother was the sole person that was like, I got your back. If you, you know, if you want to go do this, go follow your dreams. You only have one life to live. And she is my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. And um, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do this. You, everyone needs a champion and mine just happens to be my What uh, What inspired Mom. that career change? Because you said you were a lawyer and then you were like, what, you started looking at movies and just like, hey, I want to do that, or writing. I've been um, in entertainment since I was eight years old. Like I was a a child performer and and all that. And then my mom made me stop around 13 because I went through this awkward stage Mm -hmm. where I was almost six feet, but I was only 13 and I looked like I was eight. (laughs) (laughs) So I read this article about this woman named Deborah Martin Chase, Mm -hmm. uh, who's this uber black producer. She was producing, she was uh, Whitney Houston's producing partner at the time. They'd just done Cinderella. And I read this biography of what she did as a producer and how much law school was. And I said, I want to do what she does. And I went to law school. So it wasn't a a departure. It was actually just, it was a plan. It was a part of the plan. I just want to know, did you find a lot of like your peers not taking you serious within the industry because of you being a part of the LGBT community? Well, no. Well, you know, the the funny thing is my very first film I was, uh, that I produced I actually was cast in oh, okay. the ski troop, and it was an LGBT film. So the first thing that they ever saw was gay. So yes. it was kind of like, it's always been a part of what I did later in life, you know, because when I started creating the content myself, mm-hmm. and people were like, well, why isn't it about gay people? And I'm like, well, that's actually not my story. That was Maurice's story. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have a different narrative than a different story I want to tell. Um, but uh, so it's never been an issue for me. That Not in a... In a surface level, so maybe gotcha. uh, maybe along the way, but I've also done whatever I wanted to do and figured out a way to do it. So I haven't really worked within a corporate structure, mm-hmm. um, but I never it never was an issue. And then plus, my friends are you know I came out to my friends when I was seventeen, mm-hmm. oh, wow. and so gotcha. this this was nothing new. Yeah, it's one yes. of the perks of when you write and produce your own stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Now, can we talk about ski trip, please? Yes. Because you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I have a whole just. So when I was younger, when I was like 14, 15. Do not make me sick. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. I used to watch the logo, and Ski Trip used to always come on logo. Mm-hmm. I used to sit there. I used to sneak in the middle of the night and watch Ski Trip so my parents won't find out. Right. But um, I like the way the whole movie was, was shot. and It seemed like something. It seemed like me talking to my friends. It seemed like us talking. Mm-hmm. That's what I liked about it. Well, it was. You know, it was a great experience. Maurice, at the time, was just coming off of the directing team for The Chappelle Show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had a vision. And I learned so much from him about, you know, having a vision 
and doing whatever it takes to to execute the vision. You know, we made that film for twelve thousand dollars in three days, wow. and um, and so, but we had had so many rehearsals up to then. So we became, and I'm still friends with everybody in the cast. Mm -hmm. um, we became friends, so it was like we were friends. But I was the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and so the funniest thing is when we were go, we would go on tour for it because this is before Logo came about. We were yeah. Logo's first premiere movie. Yes, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, the first day that Logo cool. came on air was the first day that our film premiered. We were their first premiere movie. Wow. Um, oh. But we would go on tour with the Noah's Ark kids because all the year before it, before Logo even existed, there was nothing to do. So we would tour the Black Gay Prides and the Prides wow. and people would, they would look at the movie and then afterwards we'd have parties and they'd, you know, be giving me the one. I'm like, Byron is, I'm Nathan. <laughs> 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 I'm, actually, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> the character <laughs> is that bitch. Yeah. 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 But they love everyone loved they yeah. were like that was my favorite character. I was everyone like, loves a bitch. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> now my favorite character was that uh, that it better Latino be Byron. Guy. Byron, yeah. Byron, yeah. Byron yeah. the Latino guy. I'm sitting right here with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> you know I love you anyway. That's tough for you. Yeah. I can't you is just, <laughs> I know. He just wanted you on the show to shade you the whole time. <laughs> 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 the truth comes out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you no. wouldn't do that. No. <laughs> Unless it was the Yon Yon Oh, okay. yeah, no, 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 I, 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 I am more, yeah, I okay. want to fix your life. Okay. <laughs> Girl, you got to fix your own first. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now, the Latino guy, what, what's his deal? Oh, uh, his Emmanuel name? Xavier. Are you talking about the fine, the fine? The fine, fine one. The, the one I the stole, one that, the one I stole yes, in the, the club. The, 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 uh, the chain. And, uh, he was Haas. Haas. Yeah, he's, not, he's, he's Muslim. He's, he's, uh, he's. I forget what his background is. He's not Latino. Latino. No, no, no. no. Haas Slimin, yeah. I'm check it out. He's a great guy. He, when I was a kid, he really just flooded my basement, let me tell you. Yeah, because he's... <laughs> he's <laughs> he's <laughs> yeah, he was... He was, he was yeah, you, Blood. Wait, no, let me tell you. Are you still in contact with him? I haven't seen Haas in so long, um, but I'm on, like, we're is social media. No, he's not. He's straight. Um, but let me tell you, he came and we auditioned at the same time, and he came in in this see-through, sheer yes. shirt with all that body, yes. and I was like, okay, I'm distracted. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm no focus. Yeah, I'm no focus, but he's a sweetheart. It was yeah. fun kissing him and all of that. And, uh, Yes, now, in real life, you know I wouldn't have let him go, you know. Oh. <laughs> How was it kissing a straight man? Was it different? Was he he was fine. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't it, we, you know, no, I don't discriminate. I've never kissed a straight guy before, please. I don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you guys have to check out Ski Trip and see that man that we're talking about. Yeah, he is yeah. fine. You will really I know, he is fine. Dirty Laundry. Yes. With my favorite, Jennifer Lewis, yes. and the Red Divine. Yes. Now, how was it working on, on with that film? Because you were working with two legends. So, you know, the, the, a little trivia. We actually started shooting Dirty Laundry once before, and Maurice was playing Rockman Dunbar's role. And I, really? tried to, I tried to tell him this is not the role for you yeah. or whatever. And thank you, God, we ran out of money. Oh. <laughs> we, we flew to San Francisco, and we started shooting it. And he was, you know, Maurice is a great actor, mm. um, but he, that was not the role for him. I agree. And we, you know, God is good, and so we ran out of money. <laughs> that worked out good. And by the time... We started. I started raising more money for it. The the people that were coming on with the money, they were like, "We're not going to give you money with him in the lead. You got to mm. go get some real actors and leads with this kind of money." Because I told him, I said, "We have the Maurice wanted to do a movie that was a step up from the ski trip." And I said, "No, we have an opportunity here to do a much bigger film." Yeah. Working with Jen, Jen is, who is now family to me, and Loretta was just a masterclass in, in filmmaking and acting mm -hmm. and, and how to be on set. And I was the executive producer. And, it, you know, we went from, a, I think it was a 50000 budget to a million dollar budget. Really? And, oh, wow. I mean, when it was all said and done. Mm -hmm. I mean, but 10 years later, it's still on television. Oh, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone knows Dirty Laundry. Uh -huh. and, and the classic so, uh, scene at the uh, the picnic. Yes. Which, <laughs> is, which I mean, mean yeah. did you see the one, the yes. recent one with uh, Shirley Caesar? Beans, oh, greens, beans, tomatoes. Beans, she's, yeah. the yeah. Yeah. she's the last one. She's the last one. She's the last one. Yeah. 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 Totally. And you know, Jennifer ad libbed a lot of her lines. You know, I played her, her son, Peanut, yes. the peanut, the cousin that steals. And we'd be sitting at <laughs> that dinner table in the family scene, mm -hmm. and she'd be like, watch this. So the part when she calls um, Evelyn, she's like, what a fat ass. Yeah. That's not in the script. <laughs> really? And she didn't expect the writer, you know, they'd go back way back. Because, oh, you know, yeah. Jennifer 
replaced Jennifer Holliday in the workshop of Dream Girls when Michael Bennett fired Jennifer Holliday for yeah, her bad attitude really? and all that. And so they brought in Jennifer Lewis uh -huh. to do the acting and bring up the acting. And then Jennifer Holliday came back and then Jennifer Lewis went on a, a, a tour of UV or something like that. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer Lewis is also an original Dream Girl yes, too. She is. Mm -hmm. And wow. um, so she and Loretta knew, you know, they've been friends for years and years right. and years. And little, little secret, Shirley Ralph was actually cast to play Aunt Lettuce first. Really? Oh and then she gosh. got an episode of Law and Order and she backed out the last minute. And we, two weeks before we started filming, someone was like, call Jennifer Lewis. And I had to put, oh I had to put my big boy drawers on Ooh. and call her agent. And, um, you know, she was on a flight two weeks later to Atlanta. Really? Yeah. Did she do a lot of cussing on set? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's a motherfucker. Everybody. <laughs> she called me today to talk about because I had called her last night to tell her how good she was on the Thanksgiving episode of Blackish, and oh. uh, I think she was sick because she had to be on set. She called me today, and this is how she is, motherfucker. I was good. What? <laughs> 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 she's hilarious. Yeah, yeah she's I hilarious. love her. Yeah. She's the salt of the earth. She has become family now. Loretta is just a sweetheart too. Loretta. Um, it, you know, working with her was really ridiculous in terms of being a former actor. I'm not, I don't call myself an actor anymore. I you kinda, are an actor. I kinda, I'm a trained actor, but I don't act anymore. I put yeah, myself gotcha. in shit. Mm -hmm. um, that's what happens when you're mm -hmm. the boss. You can put yourself yeah, in yeah, shit. Yeah. Loretta took some of the craziest lines that I just, when I read them, I was like, Maurice, we need to tone that down, like the fat, fit, freak, stripper accident. Uh -huh. <laughs> and because she's so brilliant, yeah. it came off perfect. Like. Right. I think Dirty Laundry is such a success because Maurice had this great idea, mm -hmm. a great script, but then we had these actors and talent that showed yeah. up and elevated it, and um, it was it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, it seemed like it was it would have been magical just to, just to be all, just to be, be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. It, was. It, was. It, it didn't seem. Well, let me tell you, when we were running out of money and I was <laughs> like, there was one day that we had like ten dollars left in the production account, uh -huh. and we needed about like a hundred thousand to finish. Uh -huh. And so I got a bottle of wine and I locked myself in the um, my hotel room with uh -huh. my best friend Lai, who's also the casting director. And I went begging and obviously we made the movie, but wow. that was not fun. But it's not, yeah. it's yeah. all part of the process. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all it's part the of the fun. Fun. Yeah. All right, I just finished a film. Uh, called 90 Days that I wrote and co-directed with Jania mm -hmm. Frederick. Have you ever seen Noah's Ark? Yes. yes. So oh my gosh, yes. Randy. Oh my oh, gosh, yes! Yes. Yes. yes! Yeah, so she's my co-director, and she, that, honestly, Dirty Laundry was great, um, but making 90 Days it was probably the most magical production experience I've ever had. I've never had a, a more, so I say it was divinely inspired. I wrote the script in a day. Really? A, a wow. week after wow. my 40th birthday, and, um, and we, that was February 28th. And then we shot it in July and it's done. And you know, it, and I say it was divinely inspired and it was divinely carried. Like mm -hmm. everyone got along, it was seamless, it's, it's beautiful. There's not, mm -hmm. the, a lot of my films, I look at it and I'm like, oh, I see all the mistakes. Mm -hmm. There are no mistakes. And so, okay. well, but that's 10 years of doing this shit. So. Right, well, of course. Right. Right. That's what you build to. Yeah. That's why you go through all the struggles, so you can't have that passion project. Can you tell us a little bit about, like, what the movie's going to be about? Oh, 90 yeah. Days, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Sure, sure. So, um, Jessica and Taylor have uh -huh. been dating for 90 days, mm -hmm. and uh, you meet them on their 90, 91st day. Okay. Um, and so, he, she's asked him to wait to have sex. Um, because she's read this article by this guy named Nathan Hale Williams in Essence. Is <laughs> One of my most popular articles from my Essence column was, you know, the 90-day rule and why people should wait to have sex for 90 days. And, um, and, and so he agrees, but he's decided he's so in love that he's going to propose to her. Mm -hmm. And um, they have this wonderful dinner, and then um, she reveals to him that she's HIV positive. Oh, wow. And then, then what do you do? Some decisions. Wow. Then what do you do? And so it really, um, it really confronts it head on. But the, the the reason why I wrote it and the reason the point of the film mm -hmm. is that I believe that a lot of the things that we have are ba that are barriers to being in treatment or to getting tested have to do with stigma yes. and mm -hmm. love. And a lot of people feel like if once they get the diagnosis, that people are not gonna they're not gonna be able to find love mm -hmm. and, yeah. and all of that. And then I think a lot of times in our communities, especially especially communities of color, we're not 
educated on the current status of the virus. Like we don't know about prep, we don't know about pregnancy, we don't know about all of those things. And so, but I didn't want it to feel like a PSA. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted what I did a little private screening of it in New York, and one of the guys came up after me and said. Like, I was really thorough. Is this okay to say I was thoroughly entertained? I was like, that's the point. Yeah. Because yeah. this generation, you all's generation, yeah. understands when you're being talked to. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And and so you're in, it's an entertaining Tiana, her performance, when I tell you she slays. Well, I mean, she went to Juilliard, so of course oh, she oh, slays. Of course. Course. You know, but so it comes out in February. You know, yeah. we'll do the festival tours. We'll have big... Splashy premieres. Can we and have a VIP. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. On the red carpet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you heard it, right? Yeah. I confirm it. We <laughs> <laughs> get like a notarized tub of Oh my god. So remember, you own two. Now, three gets you out there. Yeah, I know, right? It's <laughs> just going to be on? me and these three boys. <laughs> Please. So your, face, your face will be at the front <laughs> of the red carpet. This shape of the end. With the folks. Right. So, Nathan, I have to ask you, you've thrown out some iconic names like Jennifer Lewis and Loretta Devine that you've worked mm. with. Who do you personally aspire to work with that's, you know, a big name in the game right now? Acting wise, who, who would I like to work with? Whether it's acting, acting or even somewhat a director. Any, any kind of collaboration. Any kind of collaboration you would love to do. do. Oh, shit. Will Smith. Yes. I would love to work with Will Smith. He's my favorite movie star. Um, and, and I say not actor, but he's my favorite movie star. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, you just don't, you know, you just don't get bigger than Will Smith. No, you know true, I mean? yeah. Um, uh, but it's, it's like, but it's also a tie between he and Oprah. Um, mm -hmm. but in terms of like making a film and, and like already knowing what project it would be, mm -hmm. it would be Will Smith. Will Smith. Will yeah. Smith. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's okay. a great choice. I was going to say, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> now, before we talk about the book, I okay. do have to ask you just one, one personal question. Okay. Now, I know you wrote. Be three I don't no, know. it's not. Know. It's it not. might be. It's not. It's not. It it's might be. Get ready. <laughs> wait, wait. Let me get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him, I'm just kidding. Um, so you, you, you said you, uh, you wrote an article in Essence. Mm -hmm. um, I had a column for five years in Essence. Really? Mm -hmm. No, I know that. Mm -hmm. You didn't do your research, then, did you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I got you back. I got you back. <laughs> <laughs> was that the question? That was the personal question? Well, I wanted to ask you if you're dating anybody. But oh, oh. <laughs> But I didn't know if that was going to be my third strike. So no, no, no. I wanted to wait and see. You don't have no strikes. You're good. We're good. We're good. I am, I am, you know, I you usually, to LA. I usually don't answer that question, but I'm going to answer that question because I have a new book coming out. Yeah. I am not. I am single. I was in a relationship, a very public gay relationship for eight years and um, and no I'm single now I've, you know recently moved to LA and I find you know dating at 40 is so different by the way the jury just said 40 he yeah. does not look he looks 22 and a half at the most come on genetics dating at 40 in Los Angeles is a book in and of itself you know what yeah. I mean mm -hmm. um, because when I you know when I was younger we didn't have the apps we didn't have right. you had to go out you had right. to go out and meet people yeah. and you know you, you couldn't just pull up something on your phone and so right. you know there's it's just a it's a different thing so I know I normally actually don't answer that question mm -hmm. but I, I I'm in a place now where I think I'm gonna start talking about it because it is complex, you know, as you yeah. get older. And, you know, I, I, and also at 40, I look back on some of the throwaways I've had, and mm -hmm. I'm like, he actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm doing that now. And my, and my, and my, and my, my parameters have changed. I mm -hmm. really, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, it was almost damn near, you had to be perfection. Mm -hmm. um, now it is, like, do you love me? Do you support me? Are you going to be there on the days that I'm down and out? Yeah. Um, and are you going to, you know, champion me when I'm winning? Right. Yeah. Um, you how's you your start. credit score? You better uh -huh. finish. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Can you, can you help me build this empire? That's yes. what it is. Yes. Can you uh. take me out to lunch and actually pay for the lunch? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 That's very important. So Next holla book. at me if you can. Yeah. I feel like that could, be, that could be your next book. Well, it is. Dating yeah, it's already done. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, it yeah, comes like, out in January. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. exclusive. Yeah, <laughs> you're in it first. Yeah, yeah. Does, it, does it have a title yet? It's called the Girl's Best Friend. Um, okay. But I, I take all of the columns and I've reworked them to update them. Yeah. Um, and I thread myself through them. 
So that's where, cool. where I didn't a personal do, touch. Yeah, too. Mm-hmm. yeah, where I did not do that when I was writing the Essence column because it was for black women, and so this yeah, one is, gotcha. has a much broader appeal. I want to hear more about the book, Ladies Who Lunch and Love. Okay. So where did you come up with the concept of that? Well, like I said, it is a novelization mm-hmm. of my uh, Essence column, and so mm-hmm. I took all of my most popular columns uh, about relationships and love, and I stuck them into characters. Mm-hmm. And so it's about um, a gay man who is the central character. Um, and the reason I didn't tell you his name is because you don't find out his name until the last page of the book. But you don't even realize you don't know his name by the, until you get to the last book. Oh, I didn't know his name the whole time. Um, because I wanted him to be a universal character. Mm-hmm. Um, and his, I think it's four <laughs> best friends or five best friends. Uh-huh. And they're all at different stages of love. And they're all fabulous. Upper, you know, West Side, Upper East Side, rich women of color, and then one white girl, Lawrence. Totally. And white. so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just really about New York City is, is its own character. So it's Vicky, it's Lauren, who's, and then there's Rebecca, who's having an affair. Ooh. There's Chrissy, who's an around the way girl, but she's a high powered lawyer, and, you know, but she has a penchant for dating downwardly spiraling men. So it's like Sex in the City, but black. Yeah, so, you know, it's been said, it's like Sex in the City meets Elaine Harris, but... Meets better, girlfriends. Yeah, but, but, but hopefully better written. Yeah. You don't like girlfriends? No, I know then I didn't like the way Sex and the City was written. It was my oh, favorite yeah. TV show, and I never, I hadn't read the book, mm-hmm. and I loved the television show, mm-hmm. and then I finally read the book, and the book's not that well written. Yeah, right? I, I couldn't get, get, get into Sex and the City, I don't know why, it didn't really... You're too young. That's your three. That's your... <laughs> are sold amazon.com um, I just relaunched uh, the, did a relaunch of the book on this new publishing platform mm-hmm. um, called wordy.com w-o-r-d-e-e-e dot com okay, we'll put and, that at, at, the, at the bottom right And but anywhere books are sold alright well I want to thank you so much for coming thank you guys yeah. for thank you so much this was so great. much fun did you feel comfortable with us of course did you feel a part of the group I did will you come back again I sure will Alright, I'll say I promise I won't say anything inappropriate. I know you're <laughs> I, inappropriate is my middle name, so I yes. love yes. that's, that's why we're friends. Yes. 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 I'm inappropriate. Yes. Before we wrap up, okay. I just wanted to ask you, what advice would you give to any young LGBT person who's trying to make their way in the game that you're in right now? What advice would you give to them? Um, it's a three pronged advice. First, okay. figure out what story you want to tell. Okay. So then some people call it branding, but if you're a storyteller, um, figure out the story that, you're, that you want to tell and, and, and stick to it um, because you need to be consistent. Mm-hmm. Number two uh, would be don't be an asshole um, because <laughs> the business is small and you know there's so many people that you know when you're on your way up it's so easy to be a jerk mm-hmm. and, but, but when you're coming down people remember that you were a jerk mm-hmm. and they don't ever want to help you and, you and trust me everybody in this business goes up and down mm-hmm. and then the third never give up just never give up. There is not giving up is should never be an option. I love that. That, that was beautiful. great. I know. That was beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're such a good author. Never <laughs> 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 stop with the writing and yeah. giving advice. <laughs> thank you so much. Can you send me like inspirational quotes every morning? Yeah, you can follow me on. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I do it every morning. I literally do it every morning. Yeah. Yeah. I do it every morning. On yeah. his Instagram, he yeah. just posts uh, inspirational quotes. But I'm if you like to pay one. me. Oh, wake up call. Yeah, wake up yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. Personal. Yeah. I have a website, NathanHaleWill.com. Um, and then all of my social media is the same. It's at Nathan H. Williams. I want to thank Nathan for joining us thank for you, our Nathan. first yeah, interview. It was a lot of fun. And I want you guys to all who are watching right now to like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to comment. You know, we love to hear you guys' feedback. And don't forget to go out and get Nathan's book. Yes. On Amazon and wherever books are sold. And <laughs> check out his new one in January. In he January, said, yes. Girl's Best Friend. Girl's go best watch friend. Ski Trip if you haven't. Yeah, go watch <laughs> Ski Trip, Dirty Line. Make a weekend of it. It'll yes. be a good weekend. Yes. Make it a Nathan yes. weekend. Make it a Nathan yes. weekend. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Until next time. Bye.